ways to replace evil with good. It says, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. You know, that love, you know, we talk about love, right, all the time. You know, love, 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 especially in church. But he says it's got to be sincere. It's got to be a Jesus kind of love. Jesus kind of love wasn't wimpy, and it wasn't self-seeking. Jesus kind of love loved people enough to speak the truth. Jesus kind of love is the love that said, I love you, and so I'm going to sacrifice my time, my money, my energy, my whatever to help you through this. And so we have to get to that place where we're just not putting on the facade in church of just smiling and, oh yeah, God bless you and everything. But we begin to truly see each other and we love each other with a deep love that truly shows forth in our life. And it says, hate what is evil. You know, it uses a strong word of hate, right? Hate what is evil. Not even just, oh, you know, just don't care for it or whatever. Hate it. Don't want anything to do with evil that is surrounding your life. Get rid of it immediately and cling to what is good. Not even just, you know, do what's good, but he's like, cling to it, love it, want it. Work in your life to cling to what is good, to know what's good. It says, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Wow, that's, that's, that's a hard one to do, to honor somebody above ourselves. Because again, since we were a child, we're ingrained that it's all about us and to please ourselves. And nobody's going to lift you up and let you lift yourself up, you know? That's the lie. But we're to honor other people above ourselves. And we're to say, you know what? I could live to please myself or I could live to please God. And I'm going to please God by honoring other people and putting them first in my life. It says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Keeping our spiritual fervor serving the Lord. You know, sometimes as as Christians, you know, you've been a Christian for a long time, right? And you start to go through the motions. You ever been there before? You go through the motions, you know, of just, you know, I'm just, you know, coming to church. I'm, yeah, I'll read the Bible. Yeah, I'll, I'll go do this. I'll do that. Whatever. And we go through the motions, but he's saying, keep that spiritual fervor. Get excited. This is the Lord your God that you're serving. This is the one that, you know, when you're here sweeping floors, vacuuming, when you're playing on the piano, when you're going out to to minister to somebody, you know, do it with zeal. Do it with passion. Do it with a heart that says, this is God whom I'm, I'm serving. And he says, get that excitement back in you. Because it's an exciting life when you serve the Lord. Because God's not boring. (laughs) People, you know, think, oh, being a Christian or whatever. Some people think, oh, that's a boring life. You can't do anything. You can't have any fun. I don't know about you guys, but I have a lot of fun. (laughs) God, God is always doing something. He's always doing something new. And if we keep close to him, if we talk to him every day, if we walk with him... It renews that spiritual fervor, and we serve the Lord, Lord with great uh, zeal. It says, "Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer." You know, we have a hope. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you you have heaven waiting. You have a hope. This world isn't it. It's not how many toys I can get in the end. You know, wins right. It's How many souls have I touched wins? (laughs) 
how many days did I lay down my life and allow God to do what he wants through me wins. There's a hope and a joy in that hope that, man, we, we are blessed beyond any person in the world because we have Christ Jesus living inside of us. Patient in affliction. He doesn't say, as some people teach, that as a believer you're not going to go through affliction. He says you're going to have patience through the affliction. When hard times come, and they will come, be patient. God's doing something. He's doing something in you, and he's probably doing something in other people as well. And you need to trust God and not be like, why have you not calmed my storm? And say, God, whenever you're willing to calm it, praise you, but help me through this to weather it out but I'm going to trust you and obey you through it all. Faithful in prayer. Prayer is not just some ritual that we do. You're talking to the Almighty God. You're talking to the God who can change your circumstance or anybody else's circumstance. A God who can, from heaven, come down to this earth and do miracles beyond what we can imagine or dream. He can do them instantly, or he can do them through time. But we're asking a God who can change any and every situation. So share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. And that's not just, you know, being a good host at your house. You know, that can be part of hospitality. But it's practicing that I see a need in you, and I'm willing to help you with it. That's what practicing hospitality is. It's just not looking at what's going on in our lives, but looking at others and saying, how can I help you to be a better person in the Lord? And we practice that mindset. All of this stuff we have to, you know, I read through this and I was like, Lord, man, there's a lot of things I got to work on. And that's okay, because it's a lifelong process. And again, don't take, 10 things and say, okay, i got to work on all this stuff. Take one, maybe two at a time. And say, okay, God, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to work on this until I get to that place where I'm confident that you've completed the work in me. I'll maintain it, but let's move on to the next thing. It says, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Wow, let's get real here, guys. Election time, right? You got all kinds of posts, all kinds of opinions. And if they don't match yours, how do you respond? Bless those who curse you. Bless, not curse. We need to be careful as believers of God that what comes out of our mouth or what gets typed on the social media is what's pleasing to God and what will draw somebody to the Lord. I don't care who you're voting for. I care about, do you know Jesus Christ in your heart? Because Jesus will help convict and encourage and direct you what you're to do. But my heart is for you to be blessed. And I don't want any political agenda to harm my witness to you. To say, oh, just because you're doing that, that's wrong, and that's, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then it shuts the door from them hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to bless those who we don't agree with. Pray for them. Encourage them. And allow the Holy Spirit to do a work in them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. That goes back to that love must be sincere. That when we get to that place where love is truly sincere in us, when some, something good happens to somebody, we don't just give the, oh, great job, you know, and, you know, a, a, a love emoji or something like that. But we truly are rejoicing because we love you so much 
that, that happening to you is exciting to us. And we don't get jealous that it happened to you and not to me. We get excited that it happened to you because I'm concerned about you and I care about you. Or we mourn with those who mourn. You know, we... I know we like to, you know, give the, you know, it's okay, it's going to be okay, we're, we're here for you. But are we at that place? Well, we are truly grieved when somebody else is grieved. When we truly mourn, that draws us to our knees for them. Because we are truly mourning for their pain and their hurt and their loss. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. You know, living with harmony with one another, that's what the church is supposed to do. We're supposed to live in the same note, in the same heart, in the same mind, the same direction of what the Spirit of God is doing. And if we're all off doing our own thing, there's no harmony. The harmony comes when we lay down our lives and seek the Lord together. And every day we're spending time with God and God is putting the same thing on all of our hearts. And directing us in the way we should go. And not being proud, but humbling ourselves. Not being conceited and saying, God, it's not about me. It's about you. It's about other people. Help me to start seeing you in every decision I make. Help me to see other people. And not just them as, you know, hi, you know, Good to see you, but see what's going on in their lives and to be able to be there for them and to be willing to associate with people of low position. Sometimes, if we're honest with ourselves, we think we're better than some people. Not everybody, but there's some that you're like, oh, man, that person, oh, they're not right up here. Oh, man, they got a lot of issues, a lot of problems. Guys, we need to be willing to associate with those people and say that's a child of God, a person made in the image of God that I am to respect. Doesn't mean I have to agree with them. Doesn't mean I have to, you know, allow them to, to do whatever, you know, to harm me or anything like that. But I am to go and to love them just as I would love my best friend. Do not repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. You know, that's, that's something, again, that's inherent in us, man. We want to repay evil with evil. Somebody cuts us off on the road, man. We want to shine a nice little bird at them. Somebody does something to wrong us. We feel like we have the right to return that. But according to God's word, we don't. <laughs> like, what are you talking about, Pastor? We don't. And we'll get into that a little bit more because he'll cover that a little bit more. But he says, do what is right in the eyes of everybody. And that doesn't mean like put on a show for everybody and make everybody think that you're goody two-shoes. It means that start making the right decisions in your life. And when people are around you, you're a witness because you're a child of God. Do what's right in their eyes. God bless you. Do what's right because people are watching you. And if you claim to be a child of the king, then you need to live that out and do what is right not only in private, but in front of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everybody. You know, that's... Not everybody you're going to come in contact with or have a relationship with, you're going to end up in peace. Life happens, things happen, and, and relationships get broken, or things happen that just... 
you know, there's anger, there's unforgiveness, there's bitterness, all that kind of stuff. But he's, he says, do whatever you can do to bring peace. I know a couple that, you know, there, something happened and there was this, you know, anger and all this stuff that, that this put off. And this couple went to this person time and time again, apologizing, even though they really didn't do anything wrong, but apologizing to make peace. Sometimes we've got to apologize even when we didn't feel like we did anything wrong to bring peace. Asking for forgiveness, reaching out, but the person would reject them continually. That's not their fault. <laughs> they did their part to do everything they could to make peace. If the other person rejects, well then, that's on them. But we do everything we can to make peace. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. It says, don't take revenge. You know, that goes back to that, don't repay evil with evil. It says, God will avenge you. Have you ever been hurt in your life? We all have. <laughs> people have hurt us. Because there are people... <laughs> And we've hurt other people, if we're honest. <laughs> but it's not ours to take the revenge. As a believer, and that's hard to do, we have to surrender to God and say, God, I'm called to forgive them. You will avenge me. You will deal with that person. And whatever you want to do, you do it. But our kindness just like God's kindness leads us to repentance, our kindness towards somebody who's wronged us may lead them to repentance because of our actions and our words. Because if we repay evil with evil, all it's going to do is just build even greater and bigger. But if we repay evil with good, either the person is just going to harden and take off or they're going to soften and repent. I had somebody come to me one time. It was at night. And he says, I just want you to know, you know, this is the last time I'm going to see you because I'm going to jail. I said, why? He says, because my daughter was just raped and I'm going to go kill the person who did it. I, <laughs> As a Father, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> let's grab the gun and let's go. But as a believer in Jesus Christ, I wept with him because I, I can't even understand the pain he was going through. Couldn't even imagine it. But I said, you know what? If you do this and you go to jail, your daughter, who's going to need you, to walk through healing and restoration. She's going to need her daddy. And if you are in jail, you will not be able to do that for her. It's not worth it. God will avenge. God will take care of that person. This stuff is not easy, guys. <laughs> it's not easy because our flesh is so strong. But we can. If we can lose 30 pounds, if we can build up lifting weights, we can build our spirit up. And we can make our sinful nature lose the power and the authority and the grip on our lives. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We can't just go home and say, okay, good word, pastor. We have to go home and say, how do I start reading this again? Maybe print it out. Take this sheet. Every day, go over it and say, God, help me. Show me what I need to work on and help me through this process. 
I'm going to end on this, guys. It's Psalm 101, but it's, it's important. Psalm 101, this was written by King David. And he says, I will sing of your love and justice. To you, O Lord, I will sing praise. I will be careful to lead a blameless life. When will you come to me? I will walk in my house with blameless heart. I will set before my eyes no vile thing. So David says, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live a blameless life. Was he perfect? We know he wasn't. He committed adultery. He murdered somebody. Did he learn his lesson? Did he repent? Yes, he did. Did he now, from Psalm 51, where he, he blew it with Bathsheba, is he now coming and saying, hey, I've learned my lesson. I'm going to set before my eyes no vile thing. Because he was on the roof looking at a woman who was bathing. And he realized, I can't do that anymore because one thought leads to another. And it doesn't even have to be that lustful thing. It could just be violence. It could be anger. It could be kids rebelling against their parents. It could be the list just goes on. What are we setting before our eyes? What do we need to remove that we live a blameless life, have a blameless heart? That's a heart that's walking in repentance. That's a heart that's walking in obedience. It doesn't mean a heart that's completely, you don't do anything wrong. That's a lie. And that will discourage you from moving forward. But if you wake up every day saying, God, your mercies are new every morning. This is a fresh start for me today. I am going to choose to do it your way. I'm going to choose to renew my mind. I'm going to choose to make my sinful nature weak and rise up my spirit. I'm going to choose to be a spotless bride that you are pleased with. And then we take action and the Lord helps us. And he says, the deeds of faithless men I hate they will not cling to me. Men of perverse heart shall be far from me. I will have nothing to do with evil. Whoever slanders his neighbor in secret, him I will put to silence. Whoever has haughty eyes and a proud heart, him I will not endure. David says, if you are going to live a wicked life, get away from me. I'm not going to associate with myself. And it doesn't mean that we don't go witness to those who are doing wicked and evil. It means who are our friends? Who are those who influence us? Because I guarantee you, whoever you hang around is influencing you. Whether you believe it or not, you are being influenced. The Bible says, don't be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. I've known strong Christians who hung out with people in bars drinking, 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 and they told me, oh, I'm strong, I'm good, I'm walking with the Lord, I'm not going to fall into that. And then months later, pray for me, I'm drinking and I'm de da 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 Who you hang out with influences you for good or for evil. My eyes will be on the faithful in the land that they may dwell with me. He whose walk is blameless will minister to me. Who's ministering to you in your life? Is it somebody that you can fully trust? Somebody that you know that is hearing from the Lord and walking with the Lord? Somebody you know that can really build you up? If you don't have that, start praying, God, give me somebody. Give me good friends. Give me good people that will not only encourage me, but they'll challenge me. Not only tell me, hey, you're doing a great job, but say, hey, you need to knock this off. People who are going to build me up and strengthen me, but I see it in their life. Like Paul said, hey, watch my life. Because I've gone through a lot, and I'm getting, he wasn't perfect, but he's like, 
I'm walking with the Lord and I'm putting away my sinful nature and living in the Spirit. Follow me. Get those people around you. It says, no one who practices deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. Every morning I will put to silence all the wicked in the land. I will cut off every evildoer from the city of the Lord. Who's in your house? <laughs> you know, sometimes in a practical way, we, we can't help who's in our house. You know, a, a spouse or children, you know, that aren't of age or whatever. But sometimes we allow people in our house that are not bringing a good spirit and not bringing a good attitude and who are not leading us to Christ and there's just turmoil. And you've got to reevaluate and say, who's, who's in my home? <laughs> what am I allowing in my home? Who am I inviting over on a continual basis? Are they building me up? Am I leaving going, man, that was a great time, man, I'm refreshed in the Lord, I'm encouraged by this person? Or am I battling temptation? <laughs> we need to be careful who we're letting influence us. And now in this digital age, it goes beyond just friendships. Now we all have our phones and our computers and we have videos galore and we have posts galore that infiltrate our minds. Now, these things, whether you even know them or not, have become your friends and are influencing you. What are you putting in your mind? If there's any vile thing, we got to get rid of it. we got to get rid of it and replace it with the good. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you that you've not abandoned us in this. <laughs> that you said that you promised to never leave us nor forsake us, and that you would give us the power and the strength, the wisdom, the grace and the mercy and the love. You will help us through this process. But you also said that we have a choice, and it's up to us to choose to do good, to overcome evil with good. So God, help us even in our part to dedicate ourselves to say, God, I'm going to do it. I'm going to live to be a spotless bride because I don't want your son Jesus dancing with a bride that has just got a wicked heart. I want you to dance with a bride with a pure heart that just loves you, submits to you, honors you, adores you, and obeys everything that you say, God. Because you are a good God. You never lead us into harm. You never have anything bad for us. You allow us to go through trials and tim uh, um, tribulation, but it's to make us better and to come out as pure gold. So Lord, help us to take those steps to repent and to obey every single day of our life. And we know that you're going to help us through it. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Be encouraged, be blessed. God loves you and he's with you. And we can all do this. I'm in it with you guys. Like I said, I read this every day. <laughs> and I'm working on stuff in my life. So we're all in this together. Um, we're going to have this section be dismissed.